Hi and welcome to the advanced course in Access 2003. My name is Nick Atkinson and during these coming hours I will guide and teach you all about how to create automatic functions and how you can handle and change the information with the help of macros and programming codes. In the basic course we learned how Access is constructed with tables and queries and how, with the help of formulas, you could view data from the database in different ways. And by now, I expect you to know how to do this. This course is perfect for you if you want to create and further evolve applications and other finer points of Access 2003. The aim is that you, after the course, should be able to construct a database which suits your needs and which is user-friendly. I have put together the advanced course in the following way. In Chapter 1, we will learn more about tables, queries and relationships. You will learn more on field properties and how relationships and reference integrity work. In Chapter 2, we will go further into a formula and you will further evolve your skills so that you may develop functional but user-friendly formulas. Chapter 3 focuses on macros, where I will show you how macros work and how we may link them to different occurrences in your database. We'll place in various conditions for macros and conversion to VBA code. And finally, let's put in an auto start function to our macros. Chapter 4 is about Visual Basic for applications, which is shortened VBA and is the language used for programming which you can use to get access to do what you want. In Chapter 5 you will learn a lot about DAO, Data Access Objects, OLE, Office Linking and Embedding and other abbreviations. We will focus on what can be done with these techniques and show you useful examples of how to fetch information from a database to create mailing lists for emails. In the last chapter I have gathered a few tips and news on what may be good to know. This is based upon my own experiences which I have gathered through the years which I hope you will find useful. Anyway, let's get started. Welcome to the course. When creating tables, it's worthwhile to make them correctly. This so that you won't wind up with an input error later on. You know that you have to define your different data types for respective fields from the basic course. You know this so that the data will be stored in the correct manner and so that you can make and print out clear and to the point reports. We'll now take a look at a few different data types and their characteristics. Now I've opened my document to practice upon and we shall now take a look at the table books in the mode design view in order to take a look at the different data types. In book ID we have a data type called auto number. In title we have text and if we scroll down here we find writer and the data type number. In the field price, we also have the data type number, but because price most often is inserted with the currency, we may scroll down to the data type currency. With the help of currency, the data is formatted according to those rules and regulations regarding the currency of the country where you are situated. Under field properties, you may also determine how many decimal places you want to have. If you choose auto, you automatically have two decimal places, but you can of course determine how many decimals you want the price to be quoted in. The currency, for example, dollars or pounds, for instance, is set according to the system settings, where the database is created. We shall also take a look at some other data types. For example, we have yes and no, which only can set the value yes or no. This may be useful if you want to place a checkbox to this field, which then either may be ticked on or off. We also have OLE objects, where we may connect documents from Office, for example a document in Word or Excel, to a field in the database and thus save the document straight into the database in Access. 
OLE objects may also include pictures and video images or sound files. We'll talk a little more about these other data types later on in the course. Let us now go on and talk about how we may insert information in a safe and secure way into the different database fields. We scroll down to the field Writer. In the Writer field we see the data type number and this is because we have a special table where all the writers are listed with a specific identification number and in the book table we save our ID number instead of the name of the writer. This could be problematic if you want to insert a new book and can't remember the ID of a specific writer. And therefore, we can use a function called lookup. With the help of lookup, we can create a quick function. Instead of inserting the writer's ID, we can be given a list of the different writers. We do this by going into lookup, click over here, and scroll down to combo box. Row source type should be placed at table slash query because we're going to fetch our information from our table which is called writer. So we choose the table writer. When we have chosen the table we have to specify which of the columns we wish to be saved in the table and which of the columns which should be shown in our list. So we do this by specifying that our bound column should be number 1. And that is the column in the table which includes the writer ID. We want to show two columns because we want to show both the writer's ID and the actual name of the writer. We choose not to show the column heads, that is the headlines. And in the field for column width, we'll use a little trick. In our combo box, we don't want to show both our writer's ID and the name. We only want to show the name. So we state that we want the width of the first column to be zero. With a semicolon, we state our division between the columns. And we want the width of the second column to be two centimeters. Let's take a look at the result by clicking on the view button. Access then says that we must first save the changes to our table, so let's do that. We can now see that the writer's or writer's ID has been changed to the actual name. And if we click in the field, a combo box appears, where we may choose between the different writers. We don't see the writer's ID, but it is this that is saved in the table, books. Now, we don't want to save any changes to this, so we close this by clicking on escape. This is the way the directory works and we close this so that we can continue.